Yo, what is poppin' guys? It is your boy Ashley, and today I'm bringing you our week whatever of the IBL. You'll see what it is above. I don't remember what week it is. Because of my opponent's scheduling issues, I'm a little off currently on what week it actually is. I'm just kind of playing the games as I can get to them. Uh, it seems like a lot of the it seems like a lot of the league is really just kind of trying to finish up. So <clears throat> we're kind of wrapped up in that right now, I believe. If I remember correctly, this is week nine versus Kurt, my friend Point Blank, who after this league will be taking a step back from league format. So this is the last time we'll be able to play each other. And if you watched my IBA video, the last time we played him, I did not play well, but we also got crit to oblivion. So hopefully this time we can avoid the critical hits as well as the any, any sort of other funny business. I don't have my team prep this week. I can't even spitball it for you because I actually... Have not rewatched this game since uh, maybe two days after we played it, which was um, a couple days ago. So, I mean, it's been two or three days since I watched this game. Um, I'll try to remember everything as we go through, but um, who knows? This game was, it, it feels very rushed. Kurt and I couldn't really get our schedules to line up very well. And usually, typically what happens is I'll get my team sent to me the day before, so the prep and everything is still fresh on my mind. But I got the prep for this team done uh, pretty much the Sunday before this week started. Got them sent to me Monday, and then it was over a week before we played again. So it has been a long time since I really approached the prep on this, and I have already deleted... Ooh, hiccup. And I have already deleted a the page from my server sorry i paused there my cat likes to just run up and jump on my keyboard and for some reason the only place she likes to put her feet are on the escape key which will bounce me out of recording and the power key which will just turn off my computer so <laughs> um, as you can see we brought arcanine we brought our good friend crocodile we brought celestila glade rotom and crate dilly now the th couple things that i do remember being issues um rotom heat in particular is a pokemon that poses a lot a lot of threat uh, it's very threatening to my team uh, there are mons like cradily that can run enough special defense to kind of handle it but it's pretty much going to be entirely on crocodile to handle the rotom heat because nothing else i have on my team really has anything to say about it um the Gallade can get some damage off, but it, Rotom Heat does have Will-O-Wisp, and he does have some very safe switch-ins to that in the form of the Dusclops, which is a Pokemon that I prepped almost 0-4. Uh, I know I do have the Rocky Helmet with Intimidate on the Orcanine for the Kangaskhan in particular, but that's really everything that I remember about the prep this week, so we're just going to bounce right into the game, start it off, and see where it goes from there um if you'll notice i did press the play button there but because i do own a macbook instead of an actual good computer um it didn't press the button for me so i'm actually not sure how long this is gonna okay so we went for about 30 minutes 30 seconds okay there we go we are challenged by Pokemon Trainer Kurt. So I do believe he leads Meganium as we leave our Crate Dilly. Just because that is pretty much... I just want rocks up. Um, and again, I do apologize for my computer being so slow. I am going to go ahead and bounce out of Discord because hopefully that will help. But as I said, I do have a MacBook and they are not good computers. So it's just going to lag. That's all I have to say about it. I'm very frustrated with the technology at this point. But you're going to see basically here that he is going to outspeed us. And we are just going to trade Toxics turn one. So both of our grass type walls are on a bit of a timer. But this Meganium, I, I don't really know what it does. But I'm not super worried about it. I feel like with the Pokemon that I brought, it probably shouldn't be too big of an issue. Is he is just going to hard switch out right here into his Rotom as I set up my Stealth Rocks. I kind of wish I would have set up the Stealth Rocks on the first turn and then gone for the Toxic. I'd have been in a much better position, but I did just want to get that Meganium on a timer since uh, the Arcanine is more important for the Kangaskhan than it is for the Meganium, obviously. And I didn't want to find myself in a situation where I was walled out late game by a Meganium. So here he's just going to Volt Switch out instead of doing something like Defog which is very very nice as i believe i just fire off the stone edge i can't imagine any other reason i would have stayed in here he's going to switch right out into the goat toga 
and he is going to eat this stone edge pretty well um it does a lot more damage than i thought it would considering the cradily really is not an offensive pokemon uh, so i kind of regret not bringing something like earth power on here but cradily is a mon that i dislike just because it has four move slot syndrome you basically if you want to bring it in the defensive capacity have to have stealth rocks and recover meaning that you can at most bring two moves for coverage so I don't know not a big fan on that front i am just gonna go right here and he is going to u-turn which obviously is not ideal that's gonna do a decent chunk of damage to my crocodile but now the crocodile is in and he is pretty much forced to go right back out into his meganium now i can't do anything substantial to this to lay down the damage right now and i can't honestly remember if i switch or if i just go for an attack i think i just go for the knockoff aiming to get rid of the leftovers uh, which is going to do a lot of damage as he is just going to fire off the toxic which sucks a little bit but i basically am just going to attack on this turn and switch out pretty much regardless of what happens i do outspeed so if i manage to land this attack i'll knock off the i'll knock out the meganium and if he chooses to go into something else it will just be losing its items so um actually no i completely uh, ignored what all of that i'm just gonna hard switch out giving this thing an opportunity to possibly recover up no i get it give it the opportunity to set up the reflect which it would not have gotten had we been able to just knock off and kill this thing so that was uh, not a good play on my part at all really um but I do get a free switch it into Rotom here as I am just going to foul play to knock it out. Um, I didn't want to volt switch out because I wanted the Rotom in so that I could volt switch out on something. And I... Ah, sorry. Lost my train of thought there. And I just figured that if he tried to switch into anything, the foul play would do net net damage across the board more than anything else would so here i'm just going to switch right back out into cradily which is unfortunately poisoned so it's not going to be taking these hits as well as i would like it to although it does chew that overheat fairly well which is really nice but even after the leftovers because of the toxic damage we are not going to be able to take another one so i think this is pretty much just a sack here unless i am going to pull a nice little double which it appears that i do so i am going to switch right out here into my crocodile um i am av on this crocodile i do remember that now so no rocks or anything like that but it is going to allow me to live things like this overheat very well again being toxic really really sucks i would have definitely preferred not to be toxic but there's not a whole lot we can do about it at this point so he is just going to withdraw rotom i thought about going for the pursuit there but i thought about damage on whatever's coming in would be better for me and i do just go for the earthquake i figured as you can see i did predict that he would switch um, it was just between deciding whether I wanted damage on that or damage on what was coming in. And I decided to get damage on what was coming in. Unfortunately, I, he does have the reflect up. Um, it does wear off on that turn. We will not outspeed this thing, so I'm just going to hard switch out into my Arcanine. That's what it's there for. And with the Earthquake damage, we are actually going to put this thing fairly low. Because as you're going to see here, he's going to go for the Power Up Punch. And that is only going to put him at plus one, which still cannot knock me out. And because I have the Rocky Helmet, he is going to be taking two rounds of Rocky Helmet damage. Basically putting him very, very low on health. So, there goes the first one. He is going to get the plus one, going back to neutral gonna take a little bit of rocky helmet and he's going to go plus plus one and take a little bit more rocky helmet so now he is basically at around 25 percent i can threaten him with the e-speed and go off for that but he does just make the smart play and switch out um, at the time i didn't think it was the smart play but it turns out eventually it was the smart play is i just go for the crunch expecting him to switch hard out into the dust clops so he does not and he reveals that he is um, no, I'm sorry. He was not Scarf, but he decided to predict me switching and went for the Ice Punch. And he is going to take the Rocky Helmet damage as well as the Wild Charge damage. And Blastoise is down. I was really happy with that play. I didn't... Based on how he had been playing and how I had been playing, I don't think he had any reason to go for Scald or something like that there. Especially since I do still have the Cray Dilly to take up that Storm Drain and get some health back that I wouldn't normally get without being able to use something like a Recover. So... I was really happy with that and now that Rotom Heat comes out I am just going to hard bounce out right into the Cradily and eat that Thunderbolt so as I said if I hadn't been toxic like if he had missed the toxic or you know just had not been toxic in general this Cradily would have given his team a lot more issues but unfortunately as you can see 
uh, that wasn't very that wasn't the case. That toxic damage on the Cradilly is really going to help the rest of his team wear it down to the point where he can knock it out. So if he can somehow take rocks away here, then I am in, in not as great of a position because rocks is very rocks has been great for getting chip damage for me that I desperately desperately needed. So he is going to just go straight for the overheat here and knock me out. But I needed him to go for the overheat so that. I could live with any of my other Pokemon. My Gallade in particular was what I was worried about. So here, I thought that he might want to switch out preserving this for the Celesteela because a lot of the things on his team cannot handle Celesteela that well. So I predicted that he would switch out here and go for the Swords Dance. Unfortunately, he does not switch out here. He's just going to stay in. He is going to Will-O-Wisp me. So I really wish I would have hit something to knock out this Rotom because that would have put me in a much better situation. But now, basically, I'm back at neutral. That was a wasted turn for me and a very advantageous turn for him because it means that I'm going to have to get some serious boost up to sweep through his team the way that I would like to with this Glade. So he is going to go straight here into the Dusclops as I am going to Sword Stance again, I believe. I'm just trying to get to a, you know, actual plus two since, you know, he did lay that burn down on me. If that burn had missed, I would have been in a really, really good position here. But because it did, um, I am not. So as you can see, the only thing I have to hit this is Shadow Sneak instead of something like Knock Off. I really should have brought Knock Off. I, I remember at the time saying that I wish my front office had helped me more. That's just something I should have just thought of. Yeah, this is a, an, an Eviolite Mon. Any Eviolite Mon needs to be handled with knock off primarily before anything overall and this is definitely a very solid example of that because i basically am just forced to sack off the glade I, if i switch it out it's not it won't have the plus four attack so i basically just had to sack the glade to weaken this dusclops and get in my celesteela which is really really unfortunate as um I am going to autonomize here, predicting that he might switch or something, trying to preserve this. But uh, he is also carrying Will-O-Wisp on this. I did not think he would be double Wisp, and he is, which really sucks because we are a physical Celesteela set. So we have no way to boost our attack without getting a kill. Um, so I just go for it here. I pop my Z move, which is the Fly and Z um, on Fly. Just praying that this is going to be able to take out this Dusclops or at least do enough damage to where I can take it out next turn after the Hex because now I am in range, not in range of a Hex, but that Hex is going to start doing a lot of damage to me and I love the way Celestilo looks in that animation and as you're going to see there, it's going to do about half of the health he has left and he is going to Destiny Bond. So here I go, okay, I'll just Autonomize again. I, don't, I have no reason to attack him here. I have, I have an option to not attack him and not kill him. That's fine, so I'll use Fly, right? Because I go up on this turn, and then I'll attack next turn, and his attack will miss. But he reveals Rest. And it was pretty much at this point that I knew I had one win condition left, and that was to get in Arcanine on this Dusclops, get the defense drops with Crunch, to keep my health up high with Morning Sun, and take this thing out that way. Because they're really, I mean, as you see, that Fly did absolutely nothing and that was stab by far my most powerful physical move to hit this thing with um so here i'm gonna go hard into rotom trying oh god i have the hiccup so bad and as you can see he is not sleep talk so we're not gambling on that we are literally just wasting his sleep turns and i'm just gonna start firing off the foul plays hoping that that's gonna do enough damage and as you see that still does nothing because dusclops does not have great physical attack he's gonna get the willem wisp willem wisp willem willow wisp off on my rotom which is super super unfortunate and as you can tell basically this game it's me versus the dusclops i did not bring enough things to handle this dusclops and i am definitely paying the price for it here i really just i honestly don't know why willow is there i think i was just trying to hurry this game along a little bit um it was before the, at this point i did not really think there was anything i could do to overcome this dusclops and win this game but 
As I said earlier, I do have a win condition in the form of Crunch on my Arcanine, and I'm gonna utilize that here. I'm gonna let him burn me. And so on this turn, I assume he is probably going for the Hex, and I'm just able to go straight out into Boon, my Arcanine, get the Intimidate off, which is bad for my future foul plays, but hopefully it won't come to that, as he is going to fire off the Hex, and that is going to do pretty much minimal damage that doesn't do very much to me at all so now i'm really really hoping he is in crunch range oh, i'm sorry i just flare blitz here uh, because again as i said i hadn't really realized what my game plan was at this point and that almost almost takes him out and he is going to rest so we have basically two turns of sleep after this one so my plan here is to morning sun up i believe and then start trying to spam crunch to to lower this thing down um but as you see he is actually going to hard withdraw out into kangaskhan so he is going to take the rocks there and i am going to morning sun which was a great move by kurt had i just straight up attacked there uh, we would have been in a really really good position because the kangaskhan would have been absolutely knocked out by pretty much anything i wanted to go for but he reveals to be rest on his Kangaskhan as well. So Kurt really just trying to wall me out this game with his thick bulky mons, uh, which is not a bad decision by far, especially because once he got that Gallade out of the way, these Pokemon can really just rest up on anything they want to. As I went for the crunch, just trying to preserve health a little bit. But after doing the calcs, I just decided that I needed to flare blitz and knock this thing out, which I do. So with the critical hit, you know, I'm not going to act like I knew that critical hit was coming, but I knew that I had to start throwing off flare blitzes to make any sort of significant progress in this game. So here fearing, <laughs> not really fearing anything, just trying to preserve the health of my Arcanine since he did not get rocks up and I do have kind of free switches. I am just going to go here and try and sack off this Rotom Mo because he's going to go for Thunderbolt there. That's going to do nothing. And basically what I force him to do here is to overheat. I for I, He has to overheat if he wants to get rid of this thing. And um, I need him to overheat so that I can live some of his attacks with my Orcanine or um, whatever my other my last Pokemon is. I can't even remember. So he, he loses the special attack, which is not that bad. And we're going to go right out into our Celesteela because we will live one hit from anything that he wants to do, right? Anything he wants to go for, we will live at least one. So he is going to opt to go for the Thunderbolt and we live with 52 and I'm going to go for the Rock Slide and we miss. Of course we miss. Um, we never get lucky. <laughs> um, I wouldn't even consider that lucky. I would consider that very, very unlucky. So... We miss, and the Rotom lives, and the Celesteela is gone. So the only reason that really matters is because we have to expend energy taking this thing out. And um, as you're going to see here, he is going to be able to Thunderbolt and chip me down. If he had, if he was not able to chip me down there, um, had we knocked it out with the Celesteela, we could have gotten damage off on the Dusclops with the Celesteela. And uh, the t the t the t the the Togedomaru would have come in and we could have gotten the Intimidate off on it, which is very important because as you're going to see here, he is going to Wild Charge. This is a roll and he does knock me out, um, which is really, really, really unfortunate because had we been able to bring our Arcanine in on the Togedomaru, we would have almost 100% lived the Wild Charge and been able to fire off a very very large morning sun or flare blitz uh, most likely i would have probably tried to morning sun twice and tried not to get got crit um seeing as that would have ba basically he was he wouldn't been doing enough damage after the intimidate to to take down my arcanine and we could have tried to 1v1 the dusclops which even though it does have pressure um and it would have come down to the luck of the crunch definitely could have gone in our favor so I don't think that we played a bad game here necessarily. Um, there's obviously always a couple of moves that we could have changed to have tilted the outcome in our favor a little bit. But I think for the most part, Kurt just had a pretty solid team matchup and also did a great job of just bringing the sets that challenge my team as well as just getting rid of the threats on my team that could possibly or potentially challenge those threats as well as just I don't think that I brought the proper prep necessary uh, again I did a lot of the prep this week 
uh, on my own, which usually at the end of these lost videos, I feel like I end up saying that, um, not having the opportunity for someone to look over and actually look over and evaluate my sets is definitely something that's been hurting me across the different seasons that I'm in. And I'm just hoping that we can improve upon that in the weeks to come on. Uh, great game to Kurt. I'm glad it wasn't hexy like our last one. I really would have liked to hit the rock slide at the end there, but it still would have just come down to um, luck getting the sp uh, getting the defense drop with the crunch that I needed and playing around the dust clops in that in that way. Again, great game to Kurt. Not salty at all. I really enjoyed playing this game. Um, sad to see him go from the from the Pokemon community, but he will be doing a lot of Overwatch content and stuff like that. So you guys definitely should check out his content. It will be linked in the description below. And yeah, I guess I will see you guys next time. We have three weeks of the IBL. Um, we have we will be playing Eric, coach of the Colorado Mamoswines. We will be playing our good friend Flame from the Minnesota Monfernos, co-coach of the BBL. And we will also be playing Brendan, who is obviously the commissioner of the IBL, coach of the Marlboro and Mudsdales. I was supposed to play him for week 10, but he's had a lot of issues with his capture card and will not be able to play. So that game has been pushed pretty much. Uh, not indefinitely, but you probably will at least see the week 11 game before you ever that, that week 10 game ever sees the light of day. So... I hope y'all enjoyed the content. Let me know in the comment section down below how you felt, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.